Good morning. What a joyous morning. And wasn't that just a, an uplifting song and prelude that Corey played for us? We give thanks. Thank you, Corey, for doing that. It was, it was uh, awesome, just wonderful. Uh, I welcome each and every one of you. I'm Pastor Rick here at the Temecula United Methodist Church. Whether you are tuning in for the first time or you've got returned from us because you've been uh, doing other things uh, the last few weeks, we're glad that you're back tuned in with us. Uh, it is a joy to be together. I want to uh, invite you to do a couple things. Go ahead and start sending your prayers up that we might capture them and have them for the uh, time of prayers that are coming up. Also, uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, to get your communion elements uh, together. If you didn't get by here yesterday to pick up uh, uh, the, the wafer and the juice to, to get your, your liquid, your juice, and, and uh, what you will have for your bread uh, together for our time of communion and to create a sacred space for, for that. And make sure that the whole household is there when we have uh, communion because everyone is invited. I want to share that the flowers are provided and offered to us by Anita just for blessings and, and thanksgiving. So we thank you, Anita, for the flowers for this week. I will be sharing more at the announcement time, but just to let you know that on September 6th, we will be having our first in person outdoor worship service. Uh, we still cannot uh, worship inside uh, because of the uh, mandates by the state and the county, but we are planning on uh, having our first outdoor in-person service. I will share more at the announcement time. Let us continue to celebrate and give thanks to God as I invite you to stand where you are and uh, sing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Let us join together in the call to worship that is on the screen. Welcome to this house of the Lord. We, we thank, thank you for, for this kind reading. reading. This is a time of hope, healing, and challenge. Our, Our spirits, spirits are in need, need of God's healing, healing touch. touch. During this time, you will be cherished and nurtured. Praise, Praise be, be to God, God who Lord offers to us such a place of comfort. comfort. I want to invite the, the children to gather around their screens of choice and to join me. Um, the one thing that they could do, I hope that they're there with uh, their families, but the one thing that you can do is uh, also tune in in, in your uh, bedroom, but it's better to, to be to, together. But I want to kind of do a, a final uh, wrap-up. I'm hoping you were part of Vacation Bible School this last week, and if you were, I hope you had a, a really good time, a lot of fun. It totally was different for us in, in how we presented it. Uh, I think we had a lot of fun ourselves. Uh, the one day that we videotaped all the times with Andy and Chelsea and Anna, uh, it was a, a lot of fun that day and, and singing the song, Jesus Loves the Little Children of the World. And if you haven't, I invite you to have your parents or yourself Go to our website, it's still there, and to uh, see all the days and all the fun things uh, that we did during the week. So uh, it was a great time. 
And during vacation Bible school, you learned how to serve Jesus, to serve your neighbor, to serve your community, to serve your family. And I know that there are creative ways. There were some that were suggested in, in the vacation Bible school uh, curriculum, but there are creative ways to do that. And I will invite you to do that uh, and, and think about how you can show Jesus' love. Today we're going to talk about that and, and how Jesus cared for uh, the people who uh, came to him, to hear him, and that were hungry, and how he cared for them and loved them. So I want you to spay, uh, pay special attention to the scripture reading uh, this morning about the fishes and the loaves and what Jesus did for, for all the, the people. So I want you to stay cool this week and have a, a great week. So now I want to share some uh, invitations and, and opportunities uh, for you. I want to talk about uh, the upcoming in-person outdoor service. You'll be receiving a, a letter within the next week, week and a half, that will detail for you what uh, will be expected if you choose to come. I want to emphasize, though, if you are part of a high-risk group, and that may be most of us in our church family, but if you're in a high-risk group, I encourage you for your health and because we love you and care for you to continue to stay home and, and be uh, praising God through our streaming service. We will continue to do that. But if you do choose to come and be with us, here's how it's going to work. On September 6th, the first Sunday that we will be having in-person services, you will come. You will need to have a mask. Uh, to wear a mask. If you do not have one, we do have some disposable ones available for you, but I encourage you to bring your own mask. You will have some questions, health questions that will be asked. You'll need to answer those, sign in, give us contact information, and uh, we will also scan for your, your temperature and make sure that you're within the range uh, that we deem uh, healthy. And if it is uh, uh, higher than that, then we will ask you to, to go home uh, until you uh, see a doctor or are able to uh, confirm to us that it's come down. You will be able to come out and seat. We're going to put as many chairs as possible, which will be most of them, in the shade uh, near the tower uh, by the breezeway. And uh, you will uh, be spaced apart. There will be chairs for if there's couples from the same household or families or individuals and be spaced out there. Um, if you saw my vlog this last week, you may have heard me say that the, the uh, uh, restaurants would be open. What I meant to say is the restrooms. Now, if you didn't catch that, then I never said it. Uh, but I, what I meant to say, the restrooms will be open, but there are going to be protocols in which to, to follow that. There will be no fellowship time. Once the service is over, uh, we will invite you to uh, say quick goodbyes and head to your cars and, and uh, go ahead and head home. Uh, there also will not be any public singing. There will be limited speaking. Most of that will come from me. If you have prayers that you would like to be lifted up, uh, I invite you to call the church office, to send an email to myself, or to text me if you have that capability, and we can raise the prayers on Sunday morning. Uh, if not, then we'll raise them the, the following week, but we will uh, lift up those persons in prayer. Uh, so those are the basics. The service time will be at 9 o'clock, September 6th. So I know for some of you, you're normally 10.30 people or 10 o'clock now with streaming. Um, but if you want to come to the service, it will be at 9 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we will have our normal streaming service. And uh, we invite you to continue to, to watch us uh, on our streaming service. So that's the basic outline of how that's going to work. And uh, again, you will probably have questions. There will be a letter that will go out with all the details. If you still have questions, please, please, please call or email and we'll get answers to you for those questions. I want to continue to invite you, if you uh, are able and you are willing to volunteer for uh, those services, you can contact me and we'll get you. We have a task list of what we're looking for volunteers to do. And that even includes uh, tech people. We're still looking. We're growing slowly a little bit of the team, but we're still looking and we can do uh, safe uh, 
training for you to be a part of the team. So we invite you to do that as well. Please continue to wear your mask, continue to abide by the distancing when you go out, and also be safe when it comes to the heat and stay cool. Before we bless our quilt uh, and our prayers, I want to do a big thank you. I want to do a big thank you for Vacation Bible School. And I think, uh, yep, it's up on the screen. You can see our two stars for VBS, uh, Andy the Carpenter Ant and Chelsea the Cheetah. But all the persons you can see on your screen that were a part of making Vacation Bible School uh, come to you this year. Uh, I find it a real joy and a blessing that these uh, wonderful people uh, made time and effort and participated in this and uh, it was fun. It was different. Uh, and I want to make sure that as many people as possible, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, see what the, the kids uh, and the families were doing. It's still there. We'll continue to have it up on our website uh, through the summer so that families can check it out throughout the summer. Uh, and if you have friends or relatives across the country, you can do it at your leisure and have a good time. So I thank all these people and God's gifts to them that they shared with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Our quilt this morning is uh, for Sue Smith's uh, Smites. Uh, Sue is a friend of Anita's uh, who is battling uh, cancer, so we pray for healing and recovery for her let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just give you thanks that you are present in the life of Sue, that you have surrounded her with your love and care. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the opportunity for this church family to reach out to her, to be surrounding her with compassion, with love and hope. And we pray, O oh God, that she feels you and your presence of your spirit and she feels the presence of this church family. We ask this and pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. As always, I light the first candle for all that have been affected by COVID for the families throughout our country, throughout our communities that are dealing with loss because of someone who uh, lost the battle with uh, COVID. Pray for all the first responders, medical staff that are there to help those that are in need. So we lift up prayers for them. Lift up prayers for Monica's cousin, uh, Katrina Bosworth. Uh, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer, so we want to lift up prayers for her and surround her with healing power. We want to say woohoo, woohoo to Megan and Jean and their fifth wedding anniversary. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So, congratulations to them. It was uh, July 31st. So, we uh, are excited to, uh, to celebrate that with them. We have prayers for Larry Natwick, who's preparing for his second uh, chemo tomorrow. Um, and then another whoop goes up to Marlene and uh, Gilbert Oaks, who are celebrating their 33rd wedding anniversary tomorrow. So congratulations, Gilbert and Marlene. Wonderful. Sandy uh, Dawson raises prayers. Thankful daughter Michelle's appendectomy went well. We are glad that she was able to have that surgery. We know that some of these things aren't happening as timely as they should. So we are thankful for that and that she is doing well. Then Marie Aurelian shares a gratitude, successful collaboration between her district and teachers union for a safe return. We are praying for all the teachers, administrators, and children and dealing with whether they're going back in person or virtual uh, learning, that they are safe and that they continue to be safe in, in whatever way that they are learning and that God will surround them with protection. Let us lift up uh, our prayers that have been shared and prayers on our hearts and minds to God. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can come and together to praise you and, and hear the stories of Jesus, the stories of healing, the stories of miracles, the, the stories of faith. 
And as we hear the stories, oh God, may they become our stories. May we be a part of the healings, a part of the, the learnings and the teachings and the invitations for others to come to hear the stories. We come, loving God, to connect, to connect through your spirit, to connect with our church family by lighting the candles of prayers to be lifted up. We come together to be connected with your creation, to be connected with all humanity, to be connected, O oh God, to bring prayers of hope and healing, of reconciliation and equality, O oh God. We lift them up to you. We lift up prayers, O oh God, for John Lewis and, and for his faithful efforts throughout his life to bring about a message of justice, a message of hope, a message of inclusiveness. We thank you for all who follow in those footsteps, O oh God, that we may be like him, that we may be like Jesus, who ultimately taught this message. Loving and, and most gracious God, we thank you that we can connect and share the prayers of loved ones and friends who are battling illnesses, life-threatening. We pray for the medical staff that are tending to them. We pray for family and friends that are surrounding them and, and offering hope and care for them. We pray, loving God, and give thanks for the celebrations for the connections of couples who are celebrating a few years or many years of love together, that they have walked faithfully with each other. They've held each other up. They've surrounded one another. They've cried with each other, laughed with each other. We thank you for those celebrations. We pray, O oh God, for our children that are going back to school. We pray for the teachers and the administrators we pray for wise decisions. And we pray, O oh God, for the understanding and the mentality to live out, do no harm in the decisions that are made. That we think of others, not just for us and ourselves. We ask this and pray this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior who is our Redeemer, who is our hope. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 13 through 21. As we continue our journey through Matthew and Jesus' teachings and healings, this is a very familiar story to most of us, the feeding of the 5,000. Hear this story. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowd heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. May God add blessing to our hearing and understanding this morning. The gospel reading that I just read is of a marvelous meal that Jesus served to the thousands of people, the feeding of the 5,000. We just heard the account from Matthew's gospel, but Mark, Luke, and John also have a version of this story. It is the only miracle that is contained in all four gospels. In fact, there are accounts in Matthew and Mark of a similar meal of Jesus provided for 4,000 men. And those might be another version of the same story, but different traditions. After all, no one was taking attendance and writing down names. This story was a a major part of the early tradition of Jesus, and it seems clear that something took place that made a very strong impression on these followers of Jesus. Now, before I continue, we should address the question that many people ask that you may be sitting at home and, and have been asking every time you hear the story. Given our scientific picture of the world, granted that some historical event lies behind this story, but was it really a miracle? Did Jesus really turn a few loaves and and a couple of fish into thousands of them? Our word miracle comes from a Latin word meaning wonder, something that causes people to marvel. It needn't be something at odds with our scientific knowledge. You remember, many of you, back in 1980, during the Winter Olympics, the U.S. hockey team defeated the the vaunted Soviet Union hockey team, and it was dubbed the Miracle on Ice. Al Michaels, who called that game, if you remember the last few seconds, he shouted out, do you believe in miracles? And hence, it was dubbed the Miracle on Ice. But nobody thinks that that was any violation of scientific laws. Maybe what happened when Jesus fed the crowds was natural, but still miraculous. Some commentators suggest that perhaps a few people were thinking ahead and took some food with them. Or maybe some just plan ahead that way and and always have some food with them as they travel anywhere. I know my father-in-law always, when he would drive, have water in his car uh, to make sure if he got thirsty that he would have a bottle of water. And maybe those same people, when they were listening to Jesus teach and seeing him heal the people, that when it came time for supper, that they were moved by his teachings of love for one another, that they not only had some for themselves, but they shared their food with total strangers. Their example encouraged others who maybe weren't sure what they were going to do to also share that then when the loaves and the fish were passed out, that there was 
plenty. It became a potluck, if you will, that everyone would have. And I know I've been at a number of church potlucks over the many, many years of growing up and being in ministry that I've looked at the table and I've looked at how many people were staying for the potluck and wondered, is there going to be enough? We tend so often just to look out for ourselves that such widespread sharing with others would be amazing. But maybe it was something that science can't explain. Science needs observation of repeated occurrences of phenomena and has trouble getting a hold of things that, that happen with extreme rarity. Perhaps, just perhaps, in creating the the world, God built in the possibility of very rare events that we regard as miracles. Some of the old Jewish rabbis ponder strange happenings in the Hebrew scriptures made such a, a suggestion. We don't have to be able to explain miracles, but it's helpful to have some ways to think about them. The feeding of the multitude was, as the Gospel of John puts it, a sign pointing to the the presence of the Creator who provides our food every day. Then in our lives, however, we don't get fed in any miraculous way. We pray. We give thanks for our daily bread in church on Sundays and, and sometimes even before meals. But we don't expect anything like a a marvelous multiplication of the loaves and the fishes to happen. Oh, sometimes we wish desserts would be multiplied that way. And if we think about it, it's not obvious what our prayer or God have to do with bread ending up on our tables. Scientists can explain it, how the energy from the sun, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the, the chemical process in green plants, Rain, genetics, soil chemistry, and the other things combined to produce grain-bearing plants like wheat and corn. And then, if we don't know it ourselves, the farmers and the millers and the bakers can explain to us how human labor harvests the grain, turns it into bread, and, and gets it into the store where we buy it. We can understand where, their, where our bread or other foods come from with, without thinking about God. In fact, plenty of atheists never go hungry. We know all that, and still we pray. Of course, we don't think that God will just make food materialize miraculously on our tables in response to prayer, but, but unless all we're doing is thoughtlessly rattling off the words of the Lord's Prayer, we believe that in some way God provides us with food. Belief that God is the creator of the world means more than assuming that that God somehow performs one critical step that no other agent can perform in the growth of grain. The same is true for the healing of injuries. The developing of babies in the womb, causing the sun to shine, or anything else that happens, the Creator works in and with everything that, that happens. The sun shining, the clouds bringing rain, the process of life going on in plants and animals and everything else that happens. We plant a little bit of grain and we have an abundance of grain. That's the way the world works. And that's the way God works with things in the world. It doesn't mean that God is continually invading nature, forcing it to do things contrary to the laws that of scientists discover. No, God is cooperating with God's creatures, working with them as they act out according to the patterns that God established in creating the universe. See, I don't have a problem between science and creation. Because I believe that God created it all. God created us to have critical thinking, the ability to make discoveries, to analyze. God is a part of all of that. Yes, scientists can go back and they are figuring out when creation started and to a certain way how, but what before that? What triggered it? 
but who is this God to whom we pray for our food? People throughout the world far back in history have believed in various, various deities who provide grain. Baal for the Canaanites, Ceres for the Romans, and so on. For the people of Israel, it was the Lord, the one who had brought them out of Egypt and given them their land. The Psalms are full of that belief. In Psalm 145 come these words, The eyes of all look to you, and you give them food in due season. You open your hand, satisfy the desire of every living thing. Today, a Jewish family at their table may pray, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Jesus grew up in this tradition and brought the God who provides for us and our creatures very close when he taught us to pray, Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. The one spoke to as his Father in heaven is the one we ask for daily bread and, and really all the things that we need in life from day to day as a child would ask a loving parent. On one occasion, Jesus brought the Creator even closer. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus had wanted to give away to the rest, for wanted to get away for a time of rest, a time of prayer, to be by himself. But thousands of people, hearing the rumors, witnessing Jesus' teachings and healings, wanted more from Jesus. And so they left their homes, and they followed Jesus. And as they started getting hungry and evening approached, many of them, most of them, realized they left without preparing, without any food. So Jesus took a little grain, five loaves, probably like pita bread, and a couple of small fish. He gave thanks. He blessed the food, broke the loaves, and gave the bread and the fish to his disciples to then feed the crowds. Those thousands of people opened their hands and they took the food and their hunger was satisfied. They may not have received more than a morsel, but their hunger was satisfied. See, in the tradition of devotion for the Hebrew people and many other Christians, there is a time for fasting and so they maybe just devoted this time to fasting, to be spiritually fed by Christ, and they were all filled up, a cup overfloweth, to where they had the strength to be able then to return home. But they were full. And when there was so much left over, they gathered it in baskets. What a potluck it must have been. The feeding of the multitude is part of the whole story of Jesus a high point of the biblical story that begins with accounts of the creation of the world by the God of Israel. It continues with the call of, of Abraham and the story of his descendants, the people of Israel. Jesus, a man of Israel, came proclaiming the names of God's reign and offering God's free forgiveness, acceptance, love, and healing to all. He lived a life of complete trust in God as his father. That trust continued well, even when it brought him to the cross and the grave. And that trust, in that trust, he was vindicated when he was raised from the dead. His mission continued when he sent his apostles into the world to share this message, to share this word. And if the story of Jesus, if this story of Jesus grips you, inspires you, moves you to believe that there is meaning to life, that you are in the care of the Creator who loves you in spite of your failings, that not even death can separate you from the love of God, then it will make sense for you to say that the God revealed in Jesus' life, death and resurrection, is the Creator of all things. And we can believe that God provides our daily bread, not because we observe God doing that, but that because it is a part of the whole compelling story of Jesus Christ. And if we can believe in this miracle, the story of God, our creator, we can believe that God is with us 
even in the midst of this COVID-19, we can believe that, that God is with us as we call out for justice and righteousness for all people. If we can believe in this miracle, we can believe that God is in the midst of our daily pain and difficulties. If we can believe in this miracle, then we know that God brings us each day our daily bread. This is what the table is that is set for us to celebrate communion. This is the time for us to believe in that miracle. I invite you to gather your communion elements. I'm going to move to the, to the table here and, uh, and we will celebrate communion. Let us share in this together. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Almighty creator of heaven and earth, you made in us, your, in your image, to love and to be loved. When we turned away and your love failed, you, our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By suffering death and resurrection of your only son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. On the white night in which Jesus gave himself up, at the meal he took the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Each time you gather, each time you eat, remember me. Following the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink it, remember that covenant of forgiveness and grace. Remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we ourselves in pray, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Take, eat, remember Christ. The blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all sins to redeem all people. Remember Christ. Take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we thank you for this meal. Though small in amount, great in how it fills us with your spirit, that we are filled, overflowing, to be satisfied. May we go from this place, O God, and witness to the love and grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has given to us I invite you to share your gifts with God's church, with this church, that we can continue to do the ministries. Be prepared to welcome those back to church that choose to, to continue to share and witness in the name of Jesus Christ. I invite you to see the different ways in which you can give to the church 
Let us enjoy the gift that we have from Corey this morning. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us, the blessings that have been bestowed upon us. We raise our gifts to you, O God, out of our love and praises to you. May they be used, O God, to continue to witness to your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to care and to love and to forgive. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us stand where you are and let us sing our closing song. How great thou art. Before I share the benediction, I want to let you all know that the next three weeks, beginning next Sunday, uh, we will have a service that will be recorded, that will be up on, on Facebook, and we'll also try to get it on YouTube. Uh, uh, we are taking a break. Our team has worked diligently and faithfully, and we are going to be recording services. We're going to do another service after this live one and have it recorded and a couple more. Uh, so we can all take a break. We want to thank you for being faithful. But please, please tune in at 10 o'clock. It'll be up there. Continue to interact with one another. Continue to post. And please post the prayers. Uh, we will go back. I will go back through that, pick up the prayers, and continue to lift those up for everyone. 
So we want to invite you to do that. So again, the next three weeks, we will be back on the 30th of August live streaming, but the next three weeks will be recorded service posted and ready for you at 10 o'clock in the morning. So don't use this as a time to, to go away and all continue to worship as a church family. Go now and may the, the God of miracles and the Son, Jesus Christ, who lived out those miracles and is one himself, and the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes to the miracles for us all around us, fill you and be with you this day and always. Amen.